Welcome into the channel everyone. Today we're talking about plasma cutting. Now in my 15 some odd years experience, I've been using plasma cutters the majority of the time. And if your cuts are a little bit undesirable, they got some jagged edges, maybe some heavy dross, like an alligator bit it and you're having to hit it over with a hammer, or maybe you're seeing a bunch of random codes on your plasma cutter and you don't quite understand them. Let me teach you a little bit about what I've learned in my experience. Probably one of the most common questions that's always asked is which machine do I need if I want to start plasma cutting? Well, what are you trying to do? Whether you want to try to run a hobbyist machine or more industrial style, from the Everlast to the Extra Fires, they're all different types of brands out there. Regardless of what you choose to do, you kind of have to think of what you're trying to use it for. Whether it's sheet metal, you're doing a little bit of here and there stuff, you're doing long continuous cuts, or you're gonna have to go up in material thicknesses, all of these things to consider. The first thing we're gonna start with is the air that is needed and the kind of air that needs to be coming out of that torch because it better be freaking dry. Now before you can even get into what compressor you're going to go get to accompany your plasma cutter because you have to get a compressor in order to run one of these things, but which size compressor do you absolutely have to have and what's kind of a bare minimum? Well first you got to figure out what machine you're going to get. These two are very different. The Everlast machine you can find a lot of this information whether it be in the manual or on the website, but the cutting air pressure range you're looking at about 65 to 72 psi that's needed for this Everlast Hurricane. It's gonna recommend somewhere around a 30 gallon compressor with a 5.2 CFM going out of the actual compressor itself. You're gonna want at least one and a half times that for the plasma cutter to run continuously all the time without having any struggles. Not to say that you can't use a smaller compressor. The Extra Fire, on the other hand, it's being a little bit bigger of a machine. This machine having a duty cycle around 60% at 40 amps, which is its max. This one maxes out at 65 amps, and it has a 100% duty cycle at 50 amps. It's a lot bigger machine, so you can guess it probably needs a little bit more juice, and it does. It needs six CFM instead of that 5.2, and that's at 100 PSI. Now, that's not to say that we're gonna be cutting at 100 PSI. We're probably gonna be cutting closer to 75 PSI with the extra fire. Now, all this is technical information that is found in each one of these manuals. So you have to look at the manual, find out what the specs are for what it needs as far as the CFM rate. Now that we know that, how do we figure out what compressor? Well, let's just take a trip to our local Home Depot. Just walking through Home Depot looking like a whole weirdo in my Wilbro's FR and my welding cap. I guess I'm gonna be that guy. So we got all of our compressors right here and all we're looking for is this information here, this C S C F M at what PSI. We're looking for somewhere around 70 PSI and like six we need this to be six so this wouldn't do neither would this but i want you guys to remember we also ran a pancake compressor one time uh, on that blazer build and we cut a bunch of sheet metal on the same hurricane even though it's not rated for the the actual plasma cutter it still will do in short bursts so now it's coming up we're at 200 psi tank here four uh, at 90 still not going to cut it but again still could get by in short bursts now we move up to some bigger ones 5.1 now we're getting closer at 90 so 5.1 at 90 at 70 it might could get away with it so this was actually what i used on my cnc table was something about this size and i ran it for years with about the same size plasma cutter as that hurricane and then we got this one here 5.1 at 90 oh there we go 6.2 at 90 this one's going to be our best bet if we had to pick a minimum now that's pretty much the biggest they're going to have at these stores now northern tool harbor freight uh you know tractor supply they may have some bigger options you're going to be looking into fittings and different size fittings that you're going to need to make all this stuff work so you got to keep that in mind when you're going to pick the compressor that you need with the plasma cutter that you bought here's a much bigger one walking out the door 11 SCFM at 90. This one's definitely going to be something that will outrun and gun both of those plasma cutters. We've got us a 60 gallon here. This is right out the door, Home Depot. Doesn't have a price tag on it, but it's probably up there. And this is what I got in the back of my shop. I've got this 60 gallon as well. This is what I saw as far as reviews that had the best. I can't really give, show you what was on the front, but it says 14.6. That was like the highest one that I saw as far as the output. And then 145 to 175 PSI. Definitely plenty. So we just crank this old dog, make sure we got plenty of air. 
Now for me, I always wanted more than I needed. So that's why I got what I got because like I mentioned, I used a machine similar to this Hurricane for CNC cutting. and was able to cut all the time. Matter of fact, I would hit the duty cycle on the machine before I would hit the error code on the machine that said I needed or was running out of air. It kept up with it. Having more than enough is a lot better and makes for better consistent cuts. If that air pressure is starting to drop, you're going to notice a cut quality issue so we want that good constant pressure and if it doesn't and it starts to dwindle down it's going to throw an error code and it's going to say hey it's not enough gas to be even bother cutting in the first place and it's not going to turn on or if it didn't have gas in the first place plugged in or maybe the compressor wasn't turned on it's going to throw another error code all that error code is trying to tell you is hey whether it's a pressure plugged in turned on or maybe there's a leak, something's up, and we need to start checking it. Speaking of gas, we also need to make sure we have nice, dry air. Like I had mentioned before, I've been using plasma cutters for a long time in my career, and I honestly didn't care. I didn't have to worry about it myself until I started my own little shop. And I always ran, run a compressor straight to the back of a plasma cutter, but they always had these little air dryers already built into the back or that you could attach them to the back. I thought that was sufficient enough. That's dry enough air for me. But you can still see some vapor, especially if you could attach this hose out of my splitter here, which is straight out of the compressor, you can see those water vapors coming out of whatever I'm using. That's just gonna ruin the life of your electrodes, ruin the consistency of your arc. Having that water run by it is just going to make things 10 times worse. We want to have the driest air possible. So I finally decided to spin the coin actually to make this video because again, I wasn't a firm believer in that it was that big of a deal. Running a plasma table and everything is why I upgraded to a lot of the tools that I have is because of this plasma table. And that being said, when I wanted cleaner, more consistent cuts, the air dryer it made a big difference. So I hooked this thing up and finally got cutting with it and it did make a very noticeable difference to have that good, clean, dry air. Now that we're done talking about the back end of these machines, let's talk about the business end. Moving on to the torch side of these machines, they're still very different in sizes, so obviously the torches are a lot different. Some of the consumables are all pretty much the same, and we'll go ahead and piece it together. We've got our swirl rings first. This is that little piece of plastic that it comes with. They have little angled holes in there, and that directs the air that's coming through and puts it in a specific direction that swirls, hence why it's called the swirl rings. You don't put this thing up whole side, up. You can still shove it in there, but it doesn't fit too great and it's gonna throw an error code. If these consumables don't all go in there, you're gonna see a code being thrown. The next is the electrode. Now this one is a 40 amp electrode for the Everlast machine, and this one's a 45 through 105 amp electrode for this extra fire. So we'll drop that in there too. These electrodes, you wanna be running the absolute same amperage that you're trying to run with the electrode you're trying to use. These come with some different electrodes, like a 65 amp, and I'm trying to run 45 amps. Well, you shouldn't try to operate that. Now I used to say fooey, that's no big deal, it'll cut just fine. And it's not to say it won't cut, but is it gonna cut as good as it should? You should always be trying to operate the equipment with the right consumables, especially when you move into CNC plasma cutting. If you're having any issues with that, make sure that you've got the right amperage and the right consumables. And the biggest thing that I check in on is these nozzles. That nozzle just sits right on there on both of these machines. And this has a different amperage range usually, and that's because the amperage size and the orifice changes. The that's coming out of her, the size of it gets bigger or smaller, and that's definitely gonna change the type of cut that you're looking for. Definitely make sure you have the right nozzle, and you'll notice if these electrodes or these nozzles start to have wear and tear, the center of the electrode will start to have a little pit that starts to form, and the nozzle, the original hole, is gonna start to get worn out, get gummed up, chewed up. We want a nice, straight, clean cut, so having a good, clean electrode with a nice, clean nozzle is important, and then when we have our retentioner. Both of these torches have retentioners to keep everything in place. If this retentioner isn't properly tightened, the machine's gonna throw a code. It's gonna say something's wrong with these consumables and they're not put together properly or they're loose or something's not right. So it might be as simple as tightening that retentioner or maybe loosening it. In some cases, I've seen our hand torch with a, on a CNC machine like I used to have. If that was too tight, it would throw an error code. Uh, the last thing is the shield. On this extra fire machine, you have two different types of shields, what I call the hand cutting shield and then the drag tip shield. Now the hand cut is more actually a machine torch tip shield. So that goes on there for the actual machine torch that I have behind me. The drag tip is what most people would run on here, but I like not having these little grooves in there to help me see a little bit better if I know I'm gonna freehand it. But making straight cuts is really easy with a drag tip and a drag shield on there. The difference between that torch and this little torch is this little electrode will screw in instead of drop in. And this little swirl ring will kind of just 
sit right on top. You want to make sure you have it the right direction. The nozzle sits on there the same, and then the retentioner sits there the same. But this is exposed. It doesn't have a cap anymore. So with this plasma cutter, you really have to be careful not to damage that nozzle. There are other retentioners that have these little standoff tips, kind of like the drag tip for the other one. Then you can turn that around so that you can have the proper standoff and still protect your nozzle. User error is a big deal with consumables. It's usually a problem with you know the amperage that you're using, not with the right amperage of consumables. You don't have something tightened properly, or you're just like, if you're not using the torch properly. Matter of fact, let's, let's look at that. So the thing that I'd like to try first is actually disconnecting the air from the back. This is the dry air. And then I'm gonna be running, this has no dry air. This is technically straight from the compressor. And we're gonna see what the difference between a, a wet cut and a dry cut. Let me get suited up here. Plasma cutting, it's not like oxyfuel cutting. You really should have somewhere around a shade eight. And the higher amperage you get, the, the more you want. So this is a plasma cut with wet air. Still cut pretty good. The biggest thing is looking at that dross right there. That was cutting with the wet air. And again, not that we can't cut with wet air. Our, our consumable life is gonna go down and we should have not as clean cuts. Now we've got the actual dry air plugged back in and see if we can see a big difference here. I mean, it's right there, it's obvious. It didn't spitter or sputter in the arc and it's, there's like no dross to even, even have to hammer away. It's really clean. I'm now a firm believer the dry air is the way to go, especially when I'm cutting in all different directions and stuff on that CNC table. So the next thing we can mess up is gonna be our distance away. If we're too close or too far away, we're gonna have a bad cut. We're gonna start with too far away and work into too close and how we can damage a nozzle. This was a brand new nozzle putting into it. So you can get really far away, but you're gonna get the money right here, staying as close as you can without touching almost like pig welding. You're too close, and it's gonna actually work good, but you're gonna drag on that material a lot more. It's gonna get hung up. And then we're gonna be damaging our tip. And if we're trying to pierce stuff, like we should not be trying to pierce like this where we're... You can see how that just splashed everywhere, right? That's no good for a nozzle. If you're trying to pierce anything, you should always hold it at an angle and let it fly up and away in a different direction. You're always gonna get that dross, all that dross on the backside if, you, if you're gonna be far away. But as soon as we got close, we lost all that dross. So having good clean air and then having the right amperage for the right consumable with the right distance. Travel speed's a big thing too. Let's see what happens when we go too slow. Let's just take our sweet, sweet time. To me, that was dinosaur speed, and oh my goodness, you can see all that dross right there. So, I mean, we could probably even still hammer it out, but if you don't want the dross, we got 65 amps, we can move. Yeah, that looks way better. Got to have the speed. If you have the capability of seeing the back side of your plate and seeing where that arc is, if it's kind of starting to curve too much, you need to slow down. Uh, but if it's blowing right through, we're blowing right through and speed's definitely gonna be going. It's kind of like TIG welding in a lot of aspects. Clean air flowing really fast across that. And I'm just trying to move as fast as that amperage will let me with the right consumables, with the driest air, with the right distance, which is as close as I can get without touching. There's a, so many similarities with TIG and plasma cutting, even the arc, besides the amount of gas that you're putting through and the swirliness and all that good science and mumbo jumbo. But hey, I think it's cutting like a charm. Now I know what you might be thinking. Austin, that was kind of some generic information. I knew I needed air and I knew I needed consumables, travel speed and arc length. I knew all this already, but did you? I did, I knew I needed all those things, but I took them for granted. And, and not until I actually had dry air or used the right consumables for the job, the CNC stuff, 
did I actually see a really nice fine tuned cut that I can actually manipulate and control a lot better. I know how to not get dross now for whatever material and whatever thickness that I'm running. And if you don't follow any of those rules, you have to look in this manual and look at some of these error codes, like one, two, three, HO, one, two, three, four, five, all the way through 20 something, because you don't have that clean air. Half these codes don't even affect you if you're not even running CNC stuff. If you're running everything by hand, it usually has got to do with your gas, not having enough of it, or you have something to do with your duty cycle, or you have something to do with your consumables. Plasma cutters are really that simple. Air, power, consumables, have the right stuff and you will make a clean cut if you cut fast enough and close enough. And if you have any plasma cutting questions, ask them. Let's do it, let's run some tests, let's run some demos. We'll see you guys on the next weld. Just walking through Home Depot looking like a whole weirdo.